exciting for me. But Mr. Gaddings, uh, well, when I first met him, uh, he was telling me about his book he had published. And I didn't, I've never seen it until today. Paul Graham uh, showed it to, to us this morning. And it's copyrighted 1980. And Paul just told me he was really impressed. Paul's a good writer. He was really impressed with this book. And that says a lot. And uh, Mr. Gaines, if you don't mind, could you come up and talk to us about the book? And Paul, you want to come up and ask us a question? Uh, yes, sir. You don't need your harmonica to talk about your book. You just can sing it all. You okay with that? Okay. I didn't mean to validate this meeting this morning. No, don't worry, uh, Mr. Burbage is up next, so you know how he is on Tom's so. All right, I'll get up and help him with his presentation. Uh, Mr. Gettings' book, The Golden Bay, That's it. right? I had to go through the interlibrary loan. It took me quite some time to find it. Uh, I have seen it for sale on the Internet for up to $175. It is not in print, and it is a very good book. Uh, and I'll ask Mr. Gettings a couple questions. Uh, I read it last Friday night. I started it. I went to the second chapter, and I did stop at 2 in the morning. I, I cannot <laughs> I can, I can count on my hands the number of times I've done that. Uh, just simply because it was very uh, intriguing, it was very uh, fast moving, and it's, our, it's, it's, it's set in our state, in, in near Sumter County. And if I could just quickly show you, you're not going to be able to see this. There's a map. Can you show it to, to, to America? America's watching this. America, America's watching this. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, come back, come back here, Balsa. It has a map of where all the characters live and in relation to uh, the, uh, the still, which is, which is a very important part of the book. Uh, we know where everyone lives. So, a as you're reading it, if you flip back to this thing, you know in relation to e everyone who's walking here or coming there or going there, you know where they're at, which is good. Uh, William Faulkner did something like this. Uh, and uh, it's, it's very nice. But anyway, the story is roughly, uh, it's about a, a man named uh, John Gibbons and his friend Sam Brown. Uh, during the Depression, uh, started, I believe it starts in 1928, during the Depression, uh, the crops had failed. And, uh, and Mr. Gibbons and Mr. Brown had gone to different towns looking for work. They had families, they had, they had their food, they were running low, the, the corn had failed. And uh, he went to a friend of his who happened to be a, a deputy sheriff that he went to school with, asking him if he could find work, and he couldn't. Uh, but he did offer him to, uh, to buy supplies for him to make uh, corn uh, moonshine, corn liquor. Uh, and he asked him if he could make it. He said yes, although he couldn't, but his friend Sam could. And uh, to make a long story short, uh, it became uh, what was known as Golden Bay uh, Moonshine, uh, G for Gibbons, which was the man's name, and B for yeah, he Brown. First, he, he first put Gibbons' batch on it. They wanted him to identify the people that was buying it. He put GB on it for Gibbons' batch, but he didn't want to give them his name, so when they asked what the GB stood for, he told them, Golden Bait. Now, <laughs> now this is this is the most important part of the interview, and we'll see if we can get it come out of it. Uh, here it says, all the characters in this book are fictitious and any resemblance to actual persons living or dead are purely coincidental. I don't believe it. <laughs> <laughs> and I have been in court three times over that book. <laughs> All right, I so hold it while I talk yes, about it. Um, I, I think it's a fine book. It should be republished. Uh, and I'm going to suggest a couple of publishing houses to them. But um, I'm telling you, I don't, I don't pick up a book and put it down like that. That doesn't happen. Amazon, Amazon, or great Amazon, has a uh, on-demand on publishing service. Yeah, probably, probably a couple of deals. Paul, thank you. Let's get Paul Graham a hand. Corey, what was the name of that publisher? Oh. <laughs> Were you able to rent the movie? Well, I, I certainly thank you. I, I didn't expect this kind of recognition this morning. Uh, there's quite a story behind this book, as y'all might well know. Down in Sumter County, I'm, I'm 74 years old. I've been around for a good while, and I've done a lot of things in my life. And uh, this is one of the things that, that I have never regretted. 
Mr. Yes, Gates. Uh, now, if you tell us the real story, you're not going to be in court or in jail for telling us the real story, are you? No, no, okay. no, no, no. <laughs> Amer America's watching this. Some of these people might still be alive. No, I'm straight the issues. Okay. I'm just wondering if that BG is a reverse, you know, belt and getty. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, you'll find out uh, that uh, if you write a book, uh, generally, the public will believe that you are the main character in the book. I've had people come to me and ask my opinion on pe things that they've written, and I've uh, advised them over the years. You know, one particular housewife wrote a book about a lesbian affair, and she came to me wanted me to look at it. I said, no, don't publish that. You're a married woman, you got two children, and if you publish it, they're going to think you are the character. She didn't pay any attention. She, her husband got a hold of it, divorced her. I wound up in court over that, testifying that just because she wrote about lesbian didn't mean she was one. Because I wrote about whiskey operations. I never made whiskey in my life. Let me tell you about this book, though, because we don't have so much time, and I can talk for hours, as y'all well know. Uh, that's when I was young, good-looking, had plenty of money. Married to a beautiful woman and uh, was living the American dream and uh, have uh, experienced quite a good time. I, this little book has opened a lot of doors for me. And I will tell you all who haven't thought about it, if you young especially, you, you young guys, write a book while you're young and while you can enjoy it. Uh, you, you, you serve your time. The main thing, I, I, didn't, I always wanted to write. And my father and my uncles uh, had been brought up in this community down there, and uh, they went through the Depression. They experienced this time. I didn't. I was born in 1937. So it was about, they were coming out of the Depression. Of course, we had Depression at the Giddings household up and still got it. Still got it. <laughs> uh, we never got out of it. But, uh, uh, but it improved some. But they used to sit around. We didn't have, I'm old enough that I remember, and some of y'all maybe do, that I, we didn't have a radio. We didn't even have a radio, people. No radio, no television. And uh, we were just poor farm people. We had plenty. We had clothes. We had food. These people were raised in that community there. And uh, they had very little education. Most of the children, when they got old enough to work, their fathers put them in the field working. They, the, 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 the law came along and said, you've got to send them to school. So they sent them whenever they had to. But as, as you notice, I don't speak English. Tell you a little story because I don't want to leave this out. After this book was written and was well known, and it was a local bestseller for about 15 years here in South Carolina, what they call a local bestseller. The University of South Carolina advanced English class called me, one of the students. They were doing a, uh, they were doing a study of uh, South Carolina writers. This was 10 years after this. I published in 1980, so this was around 90. They called me and said, Mr. Giddings, would you come over and talk to our advanced English class, got two hours. Of course, I was, I'm used to public speaking, so I said, yeah, sure, when you want me. Wrote it down. Never thought about it, never made a note, anything else. And I, <laughs> so the day that I was driving over to Columbia, for, I was living in Sumter then, I was driving over to the University of South Carolina to address the advanced English class. And I realized, I don't even speak English. <laughs> But I learned long ago from some very learned older people, never try to be something that you're not. Be yourself. People like you for what you are. Go and talk to them the way you know how to talk. I wrote this book in the dialect that these people in that community use. And they don't speak English. They don't, they don't pronounce any ends. Uh, <laughs> We, we butcher the, American, the king's English, but 
we communicate, and that's what's important. So when I got to the University of South Carolina, they had already bought the book. All the students had read the book, uh, so they were familiar with it. They were interested in why I wrote the story, how I got it published. The, the whole nine yards from the that end of it is what the university students were, were interested in. But uh, they were intrigued with this uh, whiskey thing. Uh, there were, uh, back in this days, this was during Prohibition. During, during the early years of our uh, United States, we had a lot of social socialist uh, thinking going on, which is where our social security system came into being. Under Franklin D. Roosevelt and these folks, the war had left America devastated. The average people out there were scratching, trying to make a living, and it was bad. The economy of the United States came to a dead standstill. Most of us in this room can't even imagine what that would be like. Uh, people were walking the streets with no jobs, and there were no jobs available. We're experiencing some of that right now, where we've got qualified people walking the streets with no jobs. Nothing to do. Well, these people were facing that. and uh, But there were some people who had money in the bigger towns like Charlotte, North Carolina, New York, New Jersey, these big towns. There were people that had money, and they loved whiskey. Mr. Gay, this sounds like a commercial break, because I think America would like to hear the rest of this story at another time. We can, we can get have time to get into it. So let's stop there, America, and Mr. Williams have to pick up next week on some of this, okay? Can we pick up there? They love, they love whiskey. We got that part? Yeah. yeah. So the rest of the story coming up next week, folks. It's a it's a very intriguing story, and history does repeat itself. We're going into a very similar economic situation that these people would experience. Mr. Gaines, uh, on another topic, and, and I want to thank Paul Graham for bringing the book. And I know Mr. Warren, if you have a question, we'll get to that. How much that bill costs? How much it costs? Well, it's not available. Uh, there are no copies. I had to. Uh, I, I I wanted to republish it and needed a copy, and I found that I didn't even have a copy. And I put word out, and somebody in Charleston sent me a copy of it so that I could edit it and put it back out. I've got it ready for publication again, and hopefully we'll get it uh, possibly on the internet where it can be. Uh, uh, bought on the internet and it'll be a lot cheaper well, than we, a hardback. We certainly would like to have you come back here and have a signing of a book signing yeah. here. Paul, I'm right. sure will coordinate that. Well, yeah. if, I can, uh, if I can get a hold of some books. Uh, so you didn't say the manuscript? Oh, I've got the, the original manuscript. I wrote it in pencil. Yeah, that's oh, no, it. Mr. Gaines, I want to say, say thank you and uh, uh, Bill Burbage, I know y'all are still working on the lyrics and the, work, the words and everything for the Ponzi scheme. So I'll have that ready by next week. Next week. All right, thank you. And I'll have you.